from the CBS Broadcast Center in Los Angeles. This is CBS 2 News at 5 p.m. We begin tonight with breaking news. Gunfire rings out on the streets of Van Nuys, just feet away from Champs Charter High School of the Arts. Two people wounded, two suspects in custody. Well, shots rang out shortly after noon across the street from campus, which was immediately locked down. We have live team coverage beginning with CBS 2's Christy Fajardo in Van Nuys. Christy. Pat and Jeff, as you said, two people are in custody and two are in the hospital, including a student and a school employee. But I want to show you all of the shots were actually fired outside of this jack in the box. But if you walk with me, I want to show you this. It's the proximity to the school, about 100 feet away, that had people so worried. In fact, terrified students tell us they could fear, hear the gunshots from inside. The call of shots fired sent parents into a panic and police into action. The LAPD is swarming the jack-in-the-box across the street from Champs Charter High School. There they found two people bleeding from gunshots. Police say one is a woman who's an employee of the school. The other is a teenage student. We heard the gunshots and went to the back, says Lucy Godoy, who works at the restaurant. She says they could hear a woman, possibly the victim, screaming. Another jack-in-the-box employee who didn't want to be identified tells us the two suspects were on foot and it happened in the drive through Now it's important that we let you know that although this incident occurred within proximity of Champs Charter High School, none of the shooting took place on campus. In an abundance of caution, the high school activated its lockdown procedures. Sky 2 was overhead as one suspect was taken into custody. Another was also arrested. Before that, police spent much of the afternoon with guns trained on an apartment complex as they tracked down the two men they believe were involved. Meanwhile, parents got texts from their kids who were still inside the school on lockdown. And she had a friend that got shot in the leg. Oh and it appears that friend was live streaming from the hospital, where he seemed to be in good spirits. He seems to be like making a joke out of it, kind of. So he's just laughing it off, you know, which is good. And students tell us they were actually watching that live stream while they were on lockdown. They tell us the other victim is an assistant teacher here. The fire department says she too was hit in one of her extremities and is in stable condition. It's not clear if the two were together or both just happened to be in the line of fire. Live in Van Nuys, I'm Christy Fajardo, CBS 2 News. And of course, the news of the shooting had worried parents scrambling to find out if their children were safe. And CBS 2's Lisa Siegel continues our team coverage. She's live with that part of the story. Lisa. Well, as I've been covering this, I can tell you, even as a reporter, there is no way not to feel the emotion and the sheer fear these parents felt as they waited for their kids. Behind me is where these parents finally got to meet up with their kids. Emotional reunions as they waited hour after hour to hold and hug their children. <laughs> this isn't right. What's happening? He's um, in his classroom, I think. Um... In lockdown. With tears in their eyes, frantic and scared, parents raced from all over when they heard the news that there was a shooting outside their kid's school. I was crying and I can't do anything thinking that my child is inside of there. Nicole Raglan was terrified after she got this text from her daughter saying someone shot a gun, just letting you know we're on lockdown. But to get that text from your child and you have no control over any of it is is heartbreaking. With emotions high as parents waited for answers, many say they are beyond frustrated that they heard about this from their kids in the news, not the school or authorities. They called the police station wouldn't give us information. The school's not answering their phones and they're not at, they're not putting out any communication. I just realized if my daughter doesn't have a phone, I won't know about it. But finally, hours after they first came, what parents had been waiting for, behind the school, they lined up to see their kids. Emotional reunions. Kids still in shock about what happened. I just wanted to get home. And then came the moment Nicole Raglan was waiting for. She finally got to hold her daughter. Never again. That was so scary. And I feel like crying right now, Mom. Okay. I'm so happy that you're here. <laughs> 
such an emotional reunion, and that was just one of them. These parents and guardians and sisters and brothers all here just waiting to see their loved ones and make sure their kids were safe. I can tell you we did try to contact the school about the notification process. No word back yet, but some parents do say they disagree with not getting a text. They say the school did exactly what they should. They got their kids safe inside the classroom so they would be on lockdown first. Then, they said, the notification should go out. I'm Lisa Siegel. Back to you. Okay, Lisa, thank you so much. By the way, our breaking news coverage of the story will continue next hour on CBS 2 News at 6 o'clock and tonight on CBS 2 News at 11. From multimillionaire rap mogul to inmate, Suge Knight cut a surprise plea deal today to avoid being tried for murder. Our Tom Wade is live in downtown where Knight changed his not guilty plea just a short time ago. Tom. Yeah, Jeff and Pat, this was not expected, and now Suge Knight will likely spend about 28 years behind bars because of this plea deal. That is much better than his other prospects if this went to trial. He could have faced life behind bars. By pleading no contest, you are, in fact, incriminating yourself. You understand your right against self-incrimination? Yes. You haven't waived this right. Yes. With that, Marion Suge Knight pleaded no contest to a voluntary manslaughter charge for running over a man with a pickup truck in the parking lot of a Compton hamburger stand. Knight, in his orange jail jumpsuit, answered standard questions from the judge during the hearing, including waiving his right to a jury trial. You understand your right to a jury trial? Yes. And you give up and waive this right? Yeah. The fatal hit and run was caught on security camera near the filming of a scene connected to the movie Straight Out of Compton, the origin story of the rap group NWA. 55 year old Terry Carter was killed and another man was struck. He survived. Knight claimed he tried to leave the scene because he believed the second man who was hit was armed with a gun. Investigators say there was an argument before the incident. Also part of the plea deal, charges in two cases are expected to be dropped an alleged robbery of a paparazzo and criminal threats against the director of Straight Outta Compton. And of course, this case has been so high profile since it happened back in January of 2015. It appears to be winding down. The sentencing will happen October 4th. Reporting live downtown, I'm Tom Waite, CBS 2 News. Well, it seems those accusations keep piling up. More women right now coming forward, accusing a Newport Beach doctor and his girlfriend of sexually assaulting them. Well, CBS 2's Michelle Geely has been following this story from the very beginning, and she joins us live now from Newport Beach. Michelle? That is right. On Monday, when this case was first announced by the Orange County District Attorney's case uh, office, that is, there were two women who were said to be the alleged victims. But now that this uh, case has received so much publicity, the DA says there are many more women stepping forward, including some women from out of state. Ten women have now stepped forward, according to the Orange County District Attorney, to say they are victims of Newport Beach orthopedic surgeon Grant Robichaux and his girlfriend Sarissa Riley. The pair were arrested last week and charged with drugging, raping, and assaulting two women at the doctor's home on the Newport Peninsula. Don Har lives a block away and was told by a neighbor she had to call the police back in 2016. Twice she had to call 911 because she heard screams coming from the house. And one of those two times, someone actually ran out of the house and was running across the street with her clothes all disheveled, screaming that he's trying to rape me, he's trying to rape me. In court documents obtained by the LA Times, one of the women says she first met Dr. Robichaux at China Palace, a bar and restaurant on Pacific Coast Highway, and then went out with him on a boat. Officials say Robichaux and Riley worked in tandem to lure their victims. One victim told police she was, quote, very tired and very intoxicated after the boat ride. So much so, the couple carried her into a bed at Robichaux's home, she says. The doctor allegedly gave the woman two pills, and she, quote, immediately felt lethargic. The documents reveal the victim felt paralyzed by the apparent drugs and did not feel as though she could physically resist Robichaux and Riley while they were having sex with her. My main question would be why? Why would they do something like this? They seem to be good people, good jobs. Why would they have to do something like this? 
Lawyers for the couple say they will deny the allegations. Grant Robichaux and Sarissa Riley, as a matter of fact, believe that such allegations, according to their lawyers, do a disservice to the true victims of sexual assault. And remember, Robichaux and Riley did post bail, so they are free. That's the latest live in Newport Beach. I'm Michelle Geely. Back to you. Now to more drama on Capitol Hill today. Christine Blasey Ford says that she will wait until tomorrow to decide if she will testify Monday against Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. Well, his accuser is signaling that she's willing, but there's a catch, of course. The CBS2 political reporter Dave Ryan is here with more on the catch and today's development. Catch and a lot of questions, still. Are you surprised? No. 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 You just right. You know, this is going to go on almost forever. Christine Blasey Ford is hiding after getting death threats following accusations. Judge Brett Kavanaugh sexually assaulted her when. And they were teens. Now her lawyer sent a letter saying Ford is open to testify sometime next week, but under certain conditions. The Supreme Court confirmation battle of Brett Kavanaugh dramatically intensified today, with the woman accusing him of sexual assault now saying she's willing to tell her story to the Senate Judiciary Committee. Quote, she wishes to testify, provided that we can agree on terms that are fair and which ensure her safety. Lawyers for Christine Blasey Ford said in a letter to top senators today, as protests broke out on Capitol Hill today. We believe Dr. Blasey. You don't want to be arrested, you need to back up. We still believe in you. Senators now must determine the next steps. Yes, Senator sir. Charles Grassley, chairman of the Judiciary Committee, hoped to schedule a public hearing on Monday, but Ford's lawyers today said that was too soon. Quote, a hearing on Monday is not possible, and the committee's insistence that it occur then is arbitrary in any event, Ford's lawyers wrote. The Supreme Court fight is now a wash in uncertainty as demonstrators made their voices heard and were arrested outside the offices of key Republican senators. Kavanaugh has categorically denied Ford's claim that he pinned her to a bed and groped her at a high school party more than three decades ago. As he prepared for a possible Monday hearing, a friend of his tells CNN he is, quote, disappointed and frustrated but wants to testify, end quote. Democratic senators today said Ford deserves an impartial investigation and protection. She is being uh, threatened, death threats, etc. Et this is called, I would say, intimidation of a, of a witness. They accused Republicans of not taking her complaint seriously. They've already decided. They don't want the facts. They don't want this investigation done. Senator John Cornyn, the number two Republican in the Senate, accused Democrats today of hijacking the process to accommodate political interests. Now, Ford's attorney says it's not possible for Ford to testify on Monday, but she could testify later next week. Meantime, Republicans appear to be pressing forward with plans to vote on Kavanaugh's nomination next week. Kavanaugh sent a letter to the committee saying he will be there to testify on Monday. Pat, this is changing by the hour. Back yes, to you. it is. And thanks for staying on top of it for us, Dave Bryan. And there will be much more on the Kavanaugh confirmation controversy and the countdown to Dr. Ford's decision whether to testify coming up at 6.30 on the CBS Evening News with Jeff Glor. It was a record day on Wall Street today. The Dow Jones hit an all-time high, closing at 26,656. NASDAQ gained 78 points to finish above 8,000. S&P 500 also set a record today, ending the day at 29.30. Breaking news to tell you about right now. Governor Brown has vetoed legislation that would have forced California middle and high schools to start after 8.30 a.m. The California Teachers Association opposed the bill. The American Academy of Pediatrics and the Centers for Disease Control are among those recommending later school start times. They say teens need more sleep. We'll stay with us straight ahead here on 5 o'clock. The very latest news on two L.A. County deputies wounded during a pursuit and a shootout. Plus, officers release video of burglars breaking into the home of an L.A. Dodger star. Oh, my God! And who could forget that reaction to meeting her music idol? Coming up, the little girl tells us how she's doing now that she has a brand new heart. And we're getting a look outside right now, Santa Monica. You're going to see a beautiful day, temperatures above average for now. We'll have your weekend forecast coming up. And our Jim Hill scores an interview with the Lakers leaders. That's right. Coming up, what Magic and Rob Palenka are saying about LeBron.